In the top left, we have the blue Protoss, Psy Storms, Max Packs. In the bottom right, as the red Terran, it is Liquid Clem. Thank you, Diego Toss, for the two months. Max Pack's actually doing, <laughs> I guess, uh, of course, I say that it doesn't happen too often, and then it starts happening. That's the way it goes. He is doing a low ground wall off. Uh, I mean, this does two things, right? It, uh, can it basically guarantees that you can wall off the natural. That's why you do it in PvZ. And it also opens the possibility for earlier aggression. So I, I didn't actually see what timing the pylon of the gateway was, to be fair. But uh, sometimes if you did a early pylon gateway, you'd also do very aggressive forwardly placed gateways. And you'd start that ball rolling just a little bit quicker. Something that Max Pax definitely was a fan of at one point. A little less so nowadays. Same as he's not nearly as well known for doing Max Paxes anymore. He changed. He evolved. He matured. He got older and wiser. Clem already tilted. You can see the effects. You can see the effects. Even without the webcam. <laughs> That's actually a... It's kind of a weird mistake for Clem. To, to VH. A uh, little whoops-a-daisy, though. Hopefully more than an actual head-scratcher. I think that's the that's the two Clem you know, reactions that can really tell you where his headspace is at. He either goes like, eh, you know, on the camera, or he does a little head scratch and a little scrunching up of the face. I'm glad we have such emotive players that we can actually talk about that, because, you know, for Serral, if I said that he was muttering to himself at the end of a game, you would not be able to know if that meant that he won or lost. You just wouldn't. All right, so Factory's coming down for Clem as he does go for a one rack expanse, looking to typically go in a one one one. That forward gateway was not for anything super aggressive, but it, it does still literally give your adept a little bit of a push forward. So I don't know the actual seconds, but if the gateway was here, or probably more like here. One, two, three. I mean, up to five seconds of difference getting across the map. So that's, that's actually a pretty big deal. And like I said, if you did want a wall, you now guarantee can wall. There's no like, oh, I have to get my pylon down first, and then, okay, it's actually a really wide wall, so I gotta get a second pylon down. If you needed to, you could. Uh, Max Packs won't really need to, and he certainly was not in a hurry to. Uh, he's gonna see what the Adepts in just a second actually know. He's gonna stick his ground and go for the kill. Oh my god, okay. He almost got killed. His Adept almost got killed. But the Reaper almost got killed too, and I wasn't sure who was going to win that one, and apparently no one wins, because no one's dead yet. <laughs> but Clem really wants to get the Adept, he's going to get it, yeah. That was actually Miss Micro, it looks like, by Max Pax. He clicked the wrong Adept to send back. He could have gotten one more shot on that SCV to kill it. Max Pax clearly tilted. <laughs> Not playing his A game. Uh, but that's uh, always the fun thing about those openers. They do intend to be very hardcore micro battles that look really cool, unlike when we do them. I didn't. I said he wasn't in a hurry to wall, and I, I still kind of held to that, right? He didn't use 7x core to wall. There's a downside to that, which I'll get into in a second. He didn't use a Twilight Council to wall or a second gateway to wall. But as soon as he lost out on that aggression, he did slap down, or well, before he lost out on the aggression, but his follow-up to go into a 4-gate robo was used to wall off. And then he made sure to get that pylon down to fully wall off. So he stopped the Hellion from being that little harasser in the natural, only to deal with the, pilot, the Reaper in the main base. So that is fair. But it's a, it's a four gate, something that Max Pax loves to do. Clem knows about it. The Reaper does guarantee access into the main base. And otherwise you can see how many gateways are on the front when they do something like this. The downside, since I said I would explain it, uh, I think you can guess it, is that if you do put your Cinematic Core or your Twilight Council or something important on the front lines, uh, especially something that's gas uh, costs, you have the risk of losing it to something like a tank push. Not that that's been happening in this game. A bit clumsy of a handle on the Widowmine drop. It struck, it struck at the right time. 
to actually force Max Pax to hurriedly defend as opposed to calmly defend. So he loses a Stalker as well as six probes. Bedivac's technically still alive, although very close to death. And it did, of course, distract the timing of the Stalker push. It still has to go across the map. And I don't think Grestfawn is particularly short. So this is a... Uh... Hold on, I'll tell you when we're here. I'll tell you when we're there. I'll tell you when the Stalkers are actually going to do something. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Well, no, that's not very blinkable, actually. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, Max Pax redirecting. So that's how they kind of countered a little bit more of the abuse of the Blink Stalkers. So that's nice on the map maker there. Tank will still go down. There's so much open space that when they did blink up, they did concave pretty quickly, and the tank was not protected by any type of SimCity. Clem is still in trouble, as I do not see another tank. He actually... Wait, what? Why did he transfer over to a reactor? That's gonna kill him. He should have had a second tank. Ah, that's very confusing, actually. Raven went across to do the auditor harassment, like we would expect, but then he, he just didn't go for a second tank. That's very, that's basically greedy against any Protoss, I would say, like in a more elaborate sense than just saying, okay, you were greedy, but. It's kind of like the bare bones defense is getting two tanks, and then you're like, okay, I'm I'm good against most things. And if you if you think I don't need it, then yeah, you can go ahead and go right into right into Widow Mines. But that's really weird that he would think he didn't need it. Otherwise, his build was uh, very close to what he was doing versus Skillis. So I don't think it was a elaborate change in the build that made his bio attack hit 20 seconds faster. The difference would be that he wouldn't have a second tank, he'd have more Widow Mines, which is a difference, but it just it's one that you would usually be very conscious of. I am doing this, thus taking away the defense against this in order to achieve that. And maybe I incorrectly assumed that he knew it was four gate blink but that 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 seemed obvious right like i don't i don't know where i went wrong <laughs> and i'm gonna try and make sure i uh go through all the possibilities of which i went wrong before i start talking about how clown went wrong uh very odd all right ancient sister and this is this the, the freaking map of pvt bottom left it is max packs top right it is clem some additional notes to the ending of that game, because I was so surprised it was so easy. So sorry about that. But uh, Max Pax did do a very good job of microing. It's possible that Clem thought that the map itself made it so a four gate really was not difficult to hold. The size of the map, plus the stuff. <laughs> That was stopping the stalkers from blinking up all willy-nilly. They had to go into a choke. <laughs> I, I, uh, that's that's the most credit I can really give that one because I, I, I just don't see how you would. He, he thought that it was anything other than four gate blink. He saw four gateways and he saw blink. It's not the first time, nor will be the last time, that the Protoss goes home to defend against the Widow Mine drop prior to moving out with the Blink Stalkers either. So if you're like, oh, he thought he had enough time, that's a reach. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, Clem, maybe he wasn't just smirking at that SCV loss. Maybe he was scratching his head. You know? You know? Uh, Clem seems to have a, a little bit more of a mental block against Max Pax. Uh, in the last year, basically. I mean, at some point, Max Pax was really promising in a lot of matchups and a lot of potentials of like his own build, his own creations, right? But then he could not execute properly. He was not necessarily a tournament contender. He was a kid who punched up on occasion. And then he became more of a tournament contender, but still kind of like, uh, okay, the more mechanically uh, solid, I suppose, players still going to beat you. And then he started to actually punch through that barrier as well. And now, you kind of combine the obnoxious kid who just max packs everyone on ladder with the 
the the the mind and body of a full pro gamer you know and it's just it's creating something that just max packs uh or clem is not comfortable against apparently it's very interesting so another forward place gateway and a double chrono as well like he's definitely like, the, again last game it didn't necessarily go super well but it wasn't bad either right it, uh, it, I think it did more of its job than, for instance, Skillis' attempt to do something similar in the series before this. Uh, two Adepts are going to go ahead and grab the two SCVs. So they're going to go for the Marine first, which makes a lot of sense. Try and go for the Reaper as well. Not going to catch before it hops back into that bunker. A lot of really, really small, detailed micro going into this, and then the micro messes up on the high ground. Ugh. Or does it? Is it a trap? I would say... Not a worthwhile trap. Clem probably should just lift his epos. On the other hand, why spend the APM if you know it's not gonna matter? The Hellion was out, one of the Adepts is effectively dead, and the jig is kind of up on what your build order is anyways, <laughs> by, by that point, once you saw the Hellion. Although I'm sure there are builds where you go to 1-1 one, one barracks. Reaper Hellion opener into like a tank push, but would it be on Ancient Cistern? I don't know. I don't know the new maps. If it was Moon Dance, I'd be like, oh, it's probably for sure builds like that. There definitely are, in fact. Uh, but I, I think just the way that this has gone, Max Pax is going to go ahead and assume correctly that it is a Widow Mine drop. Uh, Robo's on the way. How many gateways? Count them up, guys. Two plus two. That's four. Definitely a four gate blink. And Clem should definitely have at least two tanks. Ready. I'm gonna really pay attention. There's no way you see that many stalkers and just don't, don't think it. Oh, one of mine drops out going super well. I know Blink's not done, actually. It's gonna get a stalker. It's gonna get a stalker. It's gonna get a stalker. No, stop microing it. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a fair bit of over micro. <laughs> oh, went into the freaking gas guys. Eh? All right, second take is on the way, guys. I just want to really make that clear. And that is the improvement that needed to be made to give himself the best fighting chance possible against 4 It doesn't actually mean that he just defends it from here on out, right? This is... He had struggles against Skillis doing something similar. He kept losing tank after tank after tank after tank, and he didn't take it seriously. He would have died. So, he definitely still needs to take it seriously, despite now actually having the amount of tank production that you would usually find. And he is slipping on some of the other problems, so the bunker goes down without any fight, because the SCVs were pulled kind of late. Where is the auditor harassment? It is coming in through, through the third base, into the natural. Max Pax might just decide to go ahead and pull the probe as opposed to warp in, since he recently warped in, to abuse this kind of large natural. And since tanks are so afraid of being jumped on, they're usually not covering that port of the natural. I see how that works. Four soccer's in the main, gonna kill a handful of marines. Without losing their lives? One should lose their lives. Actually, I think Max Pax was a bit distracted there. I think he was supposed to be shooting at the Viking. Uh, dealt with the auditor. turret. Lost two probes. About to lose two more. At the very least, blink it to the main base and grab the tank. It is going to cost Max Pax a hefty number of stalkers. That was not worth it. And Clem has held the foregate. Which I was quite concerned by. Problem is, this will not be the first time that Max Pax's four gate has uh, quote unquote failed, and he still is able to recover. Max Pax and his four gates, true love story. He does them because it's abusive, <laughs> because some Terrans really don't know how to handle them, and he also does them. In my opinion, I've never actually asked the guy. But because he do, he does believe that it is the mo like a um, very highly malleable build, I suppose, that you can attack. Technically, you can defend. I guess if something really, really, really wasn't hitting you, um, and macro with it. 
when most people would say the four gate attack, but he does not macro. Max Pax continues his journey to prove that incorrect, to prove that this is a build along the likes of Amaru Turax, that is mostly known for being a bit of a all-in or cheese, but is actually something that you can macro out of. Is he right? Tune in next time. Actually, tune in right now. It's happening before our very eyes. It's just that it's not going to take... It's, it's going to take more than one series, or even a dozen series, for me to be convinced... Uh, he's been trying to go with this approach for a long time, and I am still not convinced. It's been like a year since I started noticing this and talking about it. I can tell you that the way in which Max Pax tries to recover from a four gate that has not done the damage required is really cool. Uh, it really shows the strength of a Protoss who properly understands both sides of the matchup, I think, is, is my opinion what makes it really look quite good. It sometimes reads like a Terran player knowing how to abuse a Terran player. And those are the most annoying freaking guys, honestly. Uh, and, you know, definitely some of them are more obvious and like, oh yeah, so smart doing a Warprism drop with Zella. It's, oh, genius. Okay, sure. But then he also strikes at the front with this almost ragtag army. It's not just the stalkers. He includes a guardian shield. He includes a couple of zealots. The guardian shield helps against maybe what could have been a mass number of marines that would have been there waiting to defend. The zealots help against any tanks that would have been waiting to defend. So Clem always has to have a combination of units against a combination of units, which he can't always afford to do because he can't see what combination of units is actually about to attack him. So already Clem has not done the follow-up defense uh, particularly well. He's lost 20 SCVs, 3 CCs still alive and well, only down 11 workers. That's actually not bad at all. But 20 SCVs that Max Pax got with some investment, of course, but let's say kind of a minimal investment. It would certainly be minimal if his economy was better. But that is the problem with starting off with a 4 gate that didn't exactly work. Max Pax now has Storm. <laughs> He's gonna find three Marauders that are free. And three Marauders, guys. That's a long time to produce. That's a fair chunk of change. And they were basically free. Uh, he's going to actually not overcommit. The Storms are actually here. The tanks were not siege. They're going to get maybe one shot apiece. War Prism does go down. High Templars are going to go ahead and form into an Archon. But one that's actually going to help this engagement. Only four Marauders left over. That's something that the Stalkers could actually micro against. So the Zealots are coming in as well. And the Archon finished. They're going to grab the Raven. Send Clem back home. And Clem just taps out as he is also losing SCVs on his third base. It's kind of amazing to watch Clem look, frankly, uh, substantially better than Skillis. And then for Max Pax to look, frankly, substantially better than Clem. It's very...